I'm just at a rest stop to stretch. I didn't think I had to use the bathroom and then I stood up, so I'm gonna go potty. <laughs> it's cold and frosty, but beautiful. It is 8.45-ish on Friday, driving to Chicago. So I'm gonna eat a little something. I brought with me some leftovers from last night's dinner. Um, I woke up and had a huge, painful zit, which of course I messed with. I've been trying not to mess with my face lately to like see if not messing with my face helps my breakouts. And I was doing really good. I was so proud of myself. And then, which of course, of course, the rest stop behind me. I'm gonna give it a five star. Was it the cleanest place ever? No, but for a rest stop, pretty darn good. Toilet paper, check. Soap, check. Hand dryers, check. And then the hand dryers had, I've never seen this before. They had UV lights on them, which now, like, I don't know if you would have your hands exposed long enough to the UV lights for it to actually, like, make a significant difference. But the fact that they have them at all is really cool. And then as I was coming out, um, there was a custodian who was waiting to clean, I think, the men's bathroom. Um, so the fact that they have people actively cleaning and checking on stuff and he was very nice yeah he had a big smile for me this morning told me to have a great day just ugh. random sweet people I love it I woke up obviously really puffy this morning like I've and you know so I randomly saw this video last night on um, lymphatic drainage so what you do is you take a uh, rubber band and double it hold on hold on I got this there we go. Double it. Oh, that might be too much for me. Um, but you put it around your ear and then you leave it on for about 30 minutes. It's supposed to like drain some of the, the excess fluid and puffiness from your face. So I'm going to try that while I eat. So here's the finished look. What do we think? <laughs>
elevator now. I've got about a block and a half walk to my hotel and I have to pee so bad. I really want to just kind of breathe and relax because I started to have like almost a panic attack. I was like crying in the car, but I got to go get registered for my conference. And then I think after that, I'm going to come back up and freak out here in privacy. All right, so I pulled out some of my emergency nighttime sleep aid. I will be taking these Friday night, Saturday night, so tonight and tomorrow. One, to help me sleep, and two, keep my vitamin C up because I don't want to get sick if at all possible. And then I have some COSRX pimple patches because, of course, your girl broke out on the way here. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to get out right now. I I do have a couple of tea bags in another part of my suitcase because um, tea is important when you have anxiety. I forgot my regular toothbrush, but I have a spare, which is an electric toothbrush, and I have batteries for it, so I need that. Sorry if there's sniffling. I take um, Zycam nasal spray also if I'm sick or if I'm around people who are sick, and my dad has been sick. So I'm trying to keep that up, but it does make me sniffle once I take it. I have Dayquil, I have NyQuil, I have Midol, I have tryptophan, Tylenol, I forget what else is in there. Oh, and then this is for if I drink too much, which I don't actually plan on doing any drinking while I'm here, to be perfectly honest. So I'm just getting out my pharmacy here. I was nicknamed the pharmacist at work, and I'm like, well, that sounds like a Disney villain or a M. Night Shyamalan villain, actually. Uh, Arnica, if I hurt myself. This is a tryptophan. I think there's some Midol running around in there. I have no idea what that little orange pill is. And then Tylenol. Dulcolax, if you know, you know, especially when traveling. What else? I got Tums, I got sugar tablets, I have more Midol. Apparently I go nowhere without Midol. I have alcohol pads. I didn't even know I had these because I brought extras in another spot in my suitcase as well. Excellent. But I always carry, now, I always carry Dayquil and NyQuil because the pharmacist uh, recommended it. I don't do well on planes. I get sick on planes. I don't have anxiety about flying, but I get really, really sick. And then for the first two or three days after I land, horrible, 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 horrible. I have ear pain, I have headaches. Went to the pharmacy and the pharmacist is like, he's like, you probably, he goes, do you have sinus issues? I was like, do I have sinus issues? <laughs> yes. So he said to get some Dayquil, he goes, you probably have some fluid in your inner ear. He said, which normally would do absolutely nothing. He's like, you'll never notice it. He said, but when you fly, the pressure that then hits the fluid in your inner eardrum. He said, it just, it makes a mess of things. So he said, before you fly, like hopefully the day before and the day of, I think was his instructions, take some Dayquil or some Sudafed or something that's gonna dry you out. So now I keep Sudafed, not Sudafed, I keep Dayquil and NyQuil in my suitcase pack. Okay, so here's basically my hotel setup. Um, this is how I'm going to be living for the two days that I'm here. Um, yes, there are twin beds. Not twins, they're queens, but two beds. Um, however, I get super icked out by the idea of bed bugs. Um, and I don't see any evidence 
of them, but even the nicest hotels in the world can have bad bugs because anybody can stay at any hotel. Um, so I have, I have my Crocs uh, to wear if I leave my room after like the end of the day when I'm kind of whatever changed or, you know, I don't want to deal with my ton of shoes. But like, I don't want stuff crawling in my stuff. So I'm leaving it over here. Um, that pillowcase is uh, zippered, so I'm not super worried about it. Uh, and then I guess that's just gonna be for like my purse and stuff, just easy grab and go stuff I need to keep track of. Oh yeah, and look at this cool business card holder that I got. my first time reading anything from Rainier Maria Rilke, but I brought The Book of Hours by Rilke on this trip. I had an anxiety attack while pulling up basically to the hotel. So got in, sat down in my room and decided I'm going to pull out The Book of Hours and start reading to try to calm down. And then this is one of the very early poems. I'm slipping. I'm slipping away like sand, slipping through fingers. All my cells are open and all so thirsty. I ache and swell in a hundred places, but mostly in the middle of my heart. I want to die. Leave me alone. I feel I am almost there, where the great terror can dismember me. If that doesn't describe the anxiety, I don't know what does. And he's like, oh my gosh, we're going to like get this city together. We're going to have huge, beautiful buildings. We're going to have festivals. Tourist money is going to pour in. But the reality is very different. Do you have any idea how mad I am that I did not bring a bathing suit? To the point where I am tempted to skinny dip. I get the entire terrace to myself.
So it is Tuesday evening. I got home on Sunday night. Um, basically just word vomited for about an hour <laughs> when I got home and then just sort of crashed. It did not unpack or do anything like that. Um, it was so good to sleep in my own bed again. The beds at the hotel were probably the worst part about the trip. Uh, just they were very hard mattresses, but everything else was fantastic. Last night after I got done with work, I just basically dragged myself out of bed, logged into to work like at 8.58 and to start at 9 a.m. yesterday. It was incredibly surreal. I didn't feel, it didn't feel like the real world yesterday. I was really struggling at work to be like, why do, why am I doing this? Why do I care? What, this doesn't matter. Because uh, I just wanted to be doing voiceover stuff, which is the ultimate goal of that conference was to get me back to that place. I have been really doubting myself lately. I've been really struggling to find motivation and physical energy enough to devote myself to some of this voiceover stuff at the end of the day after I'm really tired and I've got all these other things to do. And this was incredibly motivating. I did not want this to end. Um, I really was not sure how this was going to go. You saw that I was having an anxiety attack while I was in downtown Chicago and I was pulling up to the hotel and I wasn't sure what was going on. And I, I really was considering just turning around and going home, even though I was literally 50 feet away from what I had come there for. I'm glad I didn't, obviously. Um, got everything figured out, parked, left my car there for the weekend. The moment I walked in the conference, um, I went upstairs to my room, dumped my bags, and then immediately went and got registered and went into the big gallery room, ballroom. And the first person or one of the first people that I saw was Tim, my improv coach. A lot of that anxiety just kind of dissipated because one of the first people I saw was the only person that I knew there. And so I just kind of sidled up beside him. He was talking to a couple of people and I just sort of like slowly creepily put my face in view until he caught that I was there. And he turned around, gave me a huge bear hug and, you know, said he was so glad that I was there. And a lot of that anxiety just really, like I said, it just dissipated, it melted away. I was so, so glad, made myself get to that point. And then he kind of just like held on to me for a while. You know, he just sort of kind of like kept me close to him. He could tell, I think, that I was a little at least nervous, I think is what he was reading out of it. You know, so we chatted and I met Ruth Kaufman in that little group. She was incredible. And I came to, to appreciate her more and more and more as the weekend went on. She was amazing. She led two different sessions that I was in and she's a native Chicagoan and she was, she immediately was so incredibly sweet to me. And then um, Tim later asked how I was doing and I was like, I'm okay now. I had an anxiety attack in the car as I was getting here. And from that point on, he checked in with me over the weekend, which I thought was just the the end of the Friday session where everybody was really congregating and getting everything started. When we had a break, he kind of caught my eye from across the room and was like, so I came over and he literally, just literally grabbed my hand and pulled me out onto the balcony away from everybody. And he goes, I just want to check in. I want to know that you're okay. I wanted to give you some space and some fresh air. How are you feeling? I could not have asked for a better person to be looking out for me this weekend. Everything went incredible. I really thought, I pictured myself, I knew two other people there. Um, one was uh, another voice actor. Her name is Suzanne Malik. She's incredible. I'm. She's in the improv classes that I take with him and she is just amazing. I learned so, so much from her this weekend. Um, but I, I knew her from the improv classes. So I was like, I'm going to be sticking to Tim and probably Sam like glue just because I'm so, I'm the person who goes to a party and sticks to the person like glue, or I'm in the corner playing with the dog or the cat. And if they don't have pets then I'm playing on my phone because I don't like the whole small talk and introducing yourself to new people and like the weirdness that comes from that. And I ended up finding that that did not happen. I had people coming up to me and, and introducing themselves, but not awkwardly. Like I, 
I really think that this was so incredible. It's so incredible for so many reasons, this unconference, but a big part of it is that it was small compared to a lot of the other conferences. We had about 67 people. I know we were just under 70. Even though that's a lot of people, it's not nearly as much as one of the, you know, some of these bigger conferences that are hundreds and hundreds of people. And a lot of these people know each other from years and years and years of being in the business. And so there's already like a, a sense of warmth and connection, but there were never any clicks, which really amazed me. And instead of like, oh, how long you been in the biz? I just started, I've only been doing this a year. I really haven't even booked work and I don't know how to market myself. And so I'm literally just doing nothing. And instead of them going, okay, I'm going to go talk to this other person, you know, who is like a really great voice actor and is really well known and stuff. Instead, they just kind of put their arms around you and they go, that's amazing that you got into this. You've been doing it a year. Congratulations. I'm so glad you came to this conference. You know, do you have any questions? Is there anything I can help you with? You know, here's my experience. Let me know if I can do anything for you. And it was always so genuine and sincere. There was never anything fake and not a single person there from the newest person to the president of the organization had an ego about themselves and about the industry. It was amazing. So by the time I got from, I got in Friday at about one o'clock, got registered, got through the opening ceremonies. And then by 9 PM, as I was getting settled in my room for the night, I was like, I, this would, would have been worth it just for this. The drive time, the cost of the hotel, the cost of my ticket, all the flipping toll roads, <laughs> toll roads on the way, everything would have been worth that just for who I talked to and the, the warmth that I felt that afternoon. And I'm like, this is only going to get better. And I, I didn't even know how much better it was going to get. Saturday was incredible. Sunday was incredible. I met, I met so many amazing people. I met Debbie Irwin, who is in, like a queen at medical narration and Lisa Leonard, who has so much experience in medical narration and they were so unbelievably kind and sweet. And I met Hugh Klitsky, who he's like the master of the conversational read, even in like a six second commercial, I got to take a session with him and I had seen Debbie and, um, Hugh on uh, Mark Scott's YouTube channel, Veopreneur. And I was just blown away. I learned so much from their interviews on his channel. And then I, I like was starstruck when I saw that they were there. And not only were they there, they were so warm and so sweet and so welcoming. And I got to talk to each of them and thank them for their interviews with Mark because those really helped me build a foundation that then I got to be in a session with them and I, I learned so much more. Oh my gosh, I, I could just, I could just gush. It was unbelievable. So my second day, Saturday morning, I get my breakfast and the food. Oh my gosh. They fed us an incredible spread breakfast and lunch every, every day. It was, whoa, I was not expecting any of that. I was, I didn't eat any of my protein bars that I packed because I didn't need to, because I was taken care of so, so well. So breakfast, I'm, I'm, I walk into the ballroom and I'm looking for Tim to eat with him and I don't see him and I don't see anybody else that I know because I'm still brand new. And I think the only other person that I knew at that point was Ruth, who I'd met the day before, but I don't think she was there because she was driving in from where she lives. And I see George Washington III, who is another incredible voice actor. And um, he was like the main organizer of this event that I had been introduced to the day before. And I'm like, I don't, I don't deserve to sit with him. Like, who do I think I am? And so I'm trying to find another table, like at the back of the room or something. And finally, I'm like, I'm not seeing anything. I'm like, I'm just, camera, just do it. Just sit down. So I sat down and I'm like, I'm just going to stay to myself. I'm going to eat my breakfast and not bother anybody. And George turns to me. It was like, how are you enjoying yourself, Cameron? How are you doing? How do you feel about it? And I, I just told him, I was like, I feel like, you know, just yesterday was worth the price of admission. I said, I, I, if I had only that, I would be happy. I thought he was going to cry. He was so happy to hear that. And we just hit it off. And then we just started talking and we just started nerding out. And he's the green freaking lantern in stuff. And I met Batman day one. I met Batman. I met Spanish Batman day one. I met Memo. And we, oh my gosh, I, there's so many, there's so many stories. So I'm talking to George and it was just, 
It was just so incredible. We go deep dive nerdy into Batman, the character design, the art style, comparing the movies between Tim Burton and Christopher Nolan and um, what's his face who did the Justice League ones that like aren't, I don't really care for. And um, I can't remember who did Pattinson's, but basically the Keaton, the Affleck, the Christian Bale and the Pattinson and the, the art style of those movies and how they depicted and what facets of Batman they were trying to talk to. And then we went into the Joker and the archetype of the Joker. And oh my gosh, we went so nerdy so fast. It was amazing. I mean, we, and then like one of us would say something and the other would be like, exactly, exactly. That's the exact same way, like, way I feel. And we're just like, you know, doing this, we're just totally freaking out with each other. And so breakfast is pretty much kind of done and most of the table's gone. And then Tim wanders in with his coffee. I don't think he's a morning person. I know he gets up really early and works really hard all day, but I don't think he's like particularly a morning person because he seemed to kind of skip breakfast for the most part, come down to the coffee. Maybe I didn't see him. I don't know. But he like, that's my kind of spirit animal is just like, don't talk to me. Don't wake me up. I will come down when I come down. I will be drinking coffee. And an hour later, I will become a human and I can start talking to you. So I don't know how I managed to be awake early and excited. So that in and of itself is a glowing recommendation for this unconference. But um, George, Tim comes over to the table to say good morning. And George like jumps up from the table and like grabs Tim, shakes his hand and brings him into a hug. And he goes, thank you for bringing her. Talking about me. Thank you for bringing her. And I was just like, And that's what it was all weekend. There was no awkward conversation. It's like all of that small talk. Who are you? Where are you from? What do you do? All of that was already gone and out of the way. Everybody had like their name badges. So people would just come up and say your name. Like, oh, hi, Cameron. I'm so-and-so. It's so nice to meet you. Oh, I see you're from Detroit. So like that initial uncomfortable, awkward small talk is already just gone. You, you, everybody knows what you do. You're there for voiceover. And whether you're new or you've done it for 40 years, you have the same struggles and the same worries and the same concerns and you need the same support. And it just, it was like an even playing field and everybody was there to lift other people up. And in that process, they themselves were lifted up. It was amazing. I'm going to start up about it now because I can't, I could talk for days at this point. So yesterday was so hard to wake up and go back to this job where I'm just like, what is the point? And it's not that it's a bad job. It's not that there aren't very nice people there, but it's like, I realized I, like that is I'm just doing it to pay the bills, which again is also fine. But man, did this give me the motivation to get in the booth, to get to marketing. I don't feel as scared to market as I have. And I didn't even take any marketing sessions. Like I was desperately wanting to, but the way that the sessions were timed, I had to make a choice and I do not regret the choice I made. I went with Hugh Klitsky's um, six second copy uh, session and I feel like I learned the most big things that I needed from him. And I'm, I don't regret it, but man, I wish I could have gotten in on some marketing stuff. However, I'm just, I'm so energized and I don't want to lose this momentum. So along those notes, um, I have some stuff to put in my booth. Finally, I've been looking, like I have my bookshelf in my booth and my books are like me, but I'm still looking for things to personalize the booth because it's like bookshelf off to the side. And then a white wall, two monitors, like it's very sterile and I need joy in there. I need things to keep me motivated and energized and smiling. So at the end of the conference, they had everybody um, reach into a bag and Memo brought the bag around for everybody and you reached in and you pulled out your support vegetable or fruit. And I got, I don't know if it'll, if it'll show. I got the empathetic eggplant and I was sitting next to Debbie and we both got the eggplant, which made me really happy. Uh, the empathy eggplant, you sprout kindness, truly egg extraordinary. This is going in my booth. Um, Sam got the optimistic onion, which I think was ironically funny for her. <laughs> she's a very dry, like wry sense of humor. Not that she's not optimistic, um, but it's just, it was a little bit cheery for her. Um, I got some cool swag. I got my, this is just, um, this is a phone stand, which I was honestly like on Amazon a couple of weeks ago looking for a phone stand and decided I didn't want to pay for one. 
and then I got one. You saw the video of the silent disco where everybody was listening to, they had headphones and there were three channels and each channel was playing different music. And so instead of like blaring music, it was very quiet and dark and cool lights. And you were just dancing like crazy to whatever you wanted. And depending on the light, you could see if other people were dancing to the same thing. So they had these little disco balls. I didn't go to the disco. I was out to dinner with Tim and Sam and Cameron too, and Lisa and Bev. And anyway, by the time I got back, I got back just in time to do a little bit of filming and to pick up extra disco balls that they were handing out that night. So these are going up in my booth as well to remind me of the night. Do you want, do you want to play? No? Okay. What do you think? Come here. Yeah? No? Okay. And then I got this. I don't want to forget anything that happened. And I don't want to forget any of the people that I met. So I actually have, there was a Google form. Now he's playing with it. There was a Google form that had everybody that was attending. Um, so I have a bunch of business cards and I have that list of everybody's contact and I have a bunch of photographs. So what I plan to do is go through all the photos and get really good headshots of people and put a picture to everybody who was there so that I can remember names and faces. And then I bought the board to put everybody's business cards on to remind me that I have a voiceover family and that they're all there to support me. And then I'm gonna be filling in with photos that I'm gonna print out from the weekend. So I'm super excited to do that. And then to that end, I bought these index cards. I think these are the exact index cards are really, really close to the same index cards we used for um, organizing our sessions over the weekend. Um, they were color coded. Blue was business, um, pink was performance, and green was tech. Those were like the three main categories of sessions that you could go to, questions you could have answered. Um, so I'm going to be writing down the key things that I took away, the golden nuggets and um, notes and stuff that I took in my notebook that I want up in my booth to look at and remember behind the microphone. Uh, I got push pins for my... Uh, board. I hate the primary color ones and I don't love these colors, but they're better than the primary colors. So I got these for my pushpin board. That's it. I'm also going to be getting from Amazon, try to get some like uh, ribbon, real thin ribbon to kind of help decorate stuff and hang stuff in my booth so that I can like make the space super happy and what, what makes me happy and all that jazz. So yeah, I think this is going to wrap up my vlog. Thank you so, so much for coming along with me. I'm going to try, really, really try to be making more and more voiceover content in my booth, working on auditions and, you know, working on my script analysis. I really want to get back to vlogging more and that is going to be a big part of it is hopefully I can, and I really want to be doing more vlogging and it's like, what do I have to vlog about? You know, now I can be vlogging about more of the voiceover stuff, but my regular book stuff, my book reviews and wrap ups and stuff, because obviously reading is still like, it's for me, it's my one of my first loves and I'm, I'm still going to be doing that. This is still very much my book channel, but I really want to incorporate more of my voiceover stuff and just my general day to day, which, you know, had gotten very boring because it's back to a sit at your desk job, putting a bunch of stuff in a spreadsheet all day and this is so much more than that now. So thank you so much for following along. I hope you're well. I hope you have something in your life that is going to give you as much joy as this weekend has given me. And I hope you're excited for the voiceover content that uh, hopefully will be coming. Yeah, that's it. Thank you so much. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And I will see you soon.